Hello everyone, thank you for watching. I'm Victoria and I'm doing an interview today with Dead by Daylight's creative director, Dave Richard. It's a pleasure to be able to do this with you. How are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. All right, so first question, how long did you guys have your sights on Pinhead for Dead by Daylight? And did you have to go through many iterations of his power before deciding on the perfect final one to go into the game with? And what were some of the challenges and surprises you went through adapting Pinhead into Dead by Daylight? Right, okay. So, uh, well, of course, Pinhead being an icon of uh, horror, I mean, he is. Uh, he's, a, he's a classic and very well known. Um, he's been on our list for the longest time. Um, you know, it's been uh, uh, a lot of us on the team are fans of this franchise and wanted to see this character in. So we're really pleased that it's finally happening, that he's now part of the, the big family of Dead by Daylight. Um, so that second part of the question was, uh, how did we came up with the power and if there was any uh, challenges? Yeah, so uh, of course, his power is quite unique and required um, a little bit more tech than usual. So in, in terms of the ideas and how we wanted the fantasy of the character to happen, you know, like using using torture, using the chains, uh, we, we identified that quite early in the process. We really wanted to go all in and use the puzzle box. It was important that it was part of the power of the design. So uh, the idea came quite quickly. Um, and in our process uh, with the design team, we uh, go through a prototype phase where we uh, quickly iterate and try a lot of different ideas uh, that we want to try out uh, with the power. And uh, we managed to identify what we wanted to do quite early. And the challenges were mostly technical, you know, using a lot of chains, being able to spawn and control these chains, um, you know, from anywhere in the level on multiple characters uh, was the, the bulk of the challenge. Yeah, because on the public test build, if you let the chain hunt go, all the survivors are getting haunted by chains. They can't do generators or cleanse totems, and they, they have to find that puzzle box and solve it. Yeah. Pinhead's perk Scourge Hook, Gift of Pain, puts a rewarding twist on killers hooking survivors. Can we expect more Scourge Hook perks in the future? And why did you decide that survivors cannot see Scourge Hooks? Uh, so, uh, yeah, very interesting question. For sure, Scourge Hook is something that we'll see more in the future. Uh, just like when we first introduced the X perks uh, with the hag back in the days, uh, this is a type of perk that we want to you know, create a new gameplay space with so that we can explore uh, more um, around the hooks, around these types of perks. Um, so right now we chose this type of balance, uh, you know, based on the feedback that we got from the PTB, based on our internal play testing. Uh, this is the base, uh, the best setup uh, that we can have. Uh, of course, as the game, um, I mean, as the players interact with this perk more, and that it become, uh, you know, as part of the normal skill set that you can use, uh, we'll see if we need to adapt anything out of these perks. I remember during one of your events, survivors would specifically sabotage event hooks so killers couldn't get the reward out of it. Was that like a concern with the Scourge hook perks as well? Well, um, I don't think it was. So uh, with the new setup of sabotage, it's, it, it's less of a problem than it was uh, you know, in the early days where sabotage were permanent and were quite easy to do. Um, so uh, I don't think it's as much of a problem today. But of course, it's important that uh, when you equip a perk, it stays relevant. Um, yeah. Something else we saw in the public test build is that killer and survivor ranks look completely different. Uh, why did you decide on changing the ranking system if it will no longer be used to determine uh, your matchmaking? And will ranking up still be based on emblems? Right. Okay. So uh, yes, the emblem system is still uh, being kept for the grading system. Uh, so we decided to change that visual mainly on the ranks that are now grades to uh, try and separate both systems so that it's clear that we're starting a new age in matchmaking and that the ranks now are part of the past. They're not just, just like you said, they're not part mm -hmm. of the matchmaking anymore. But we wanted to keep that system in because it is a, a great way to see your progress uh, within a class, you know, within a role. So we still want to have that in and uh, for you to be able to see that you're 
uh, going up the echelon and becoming better with the role you're using. Um, so yeah, that's it. And when ranking up at the higher ranks, you need to do more to rank up. Is that still going to be true? If I recall properly, it is still true. So the, uh, the grading system is still very similar uh, to what it was. Next, are there any plans to increase how many blood points players can earn in a trial? With 179 perks and 52 characters, it can be difficult for new players to get the perks they want. What are the plans to address this ever-increasing grind as you add more and more characters? Yeah, true. Uh, so uh, a little bit of history for you know anyone that um, has been uh, has not been following Dead by Daylight since the beginning, and you're right in identifying this problem, is that we've built a progression system that was uh, quite addicting and make a lot of sense um, back in the days with fewer characters, and it uh, it was designed to scale, but not at the level it is today. Uh, so um, during the years, we've changed a little bit our progression work. We've lowered the amount of blood points it takes to go through the various level into prestige and to unlock content. But the fact that we're releasing so many characters in a year uh, with new perks to get, it gets exponentially difficult to get exactly what you want, just like you said. Uh, so the team is currently looking into lowering this grind and giving access to the player to the perks they want uh, much faster and in a more of a permanent way so that the grind doesn't feel, well, that the grind pretty much disappear and that we focus on the fun of adding new characters and new content so that you can uh, play with your favorite character. Um, it is though a very complex system and uh, it has ramification all over the place in the game. So it's quite a big contract that we have right now on the team and we're still in the early days of it. So. I can't say much more. Yeah, so it's not something that's just easy to fix. No, it's it's not easy um, because of various different systems that you know uses the blood points, the economic systems, and we want to make sure that also players that played with the you know the current system still feel that the time they put in the game uh, is relevant and is still relevant once we change that. Uh, so uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of questions that we need to answer, but we do uh, agree with this problem and we do want to change it. A key rework tying them to Mori's was mentioned in the anniversary live stream. Uh, what are the challenges you're facing right now with balancing the key item, and will we see this change anytime soon, or is it still far off? Um, I can talk about release today. Uh, we're still into prototyping and discovery phases right now. Uh, on these um, on these tasks, um, and yeah, it is uh, quite challenging um, to find the right recipe to make more recent key uh, part of a normal uh, playthrough of a match. Right, so we want to make sure that the mori and the key is not like uh, so much of a surprise, but that it's more something that. A a player or players will work towards and it's understood in a normal match that this sort of event can happen and that you don't feel like the victory is stolen from you. Um, so yeah, still working on that. What surprised you most about how survivors use keys? Well, I mean, they've been around for a long time. Um, uh, an interesting story is that uh, the hatch and uh, the keys, well, were integrated in the game very, very late, you know, just, just before we went into beta uh, six years ago um, to make sure that uh, there was a, an alternative way if too many gens were still to be made and only one survivor was left. Uh, and since that time, we've seen a lot of very cool clutch scenario where the survivor escaped. And of course, the feeling is so good as a survivor when you manage to like clutch save yourself right before a killer gets to you. Uh, and yeah, like I mentioned, this is something that we want to preserve, that feeling on the survivor side. Just same thing with the Mori, right? The, the feeling you have when you're a killer, we want to preserve that. But yeah, it, it can feel terrible on the other side. So that's what we need to be careful about. But one thing back in the day, uh, I think it's not possible to do anymore. Um, I'm pretty sure you you were able to bring a key and uh, see the hatch very early in the game. That's the difference with today, right? The hatch appears much right. later in the match. So it was there right at the beginning and you could, you know, get all of the four survivor 
coordinated to escape the hatch at the same time. Uh, it, it was always quite a surprise when that happened. It was funny, but of course it was so out of out of balance yeah. for the killer. Because <laughs> the killer is patrolling the generators and then all of a sudden but, the hey, game's over. They're all gone. What happened? Is it a bug? You know, yeah. like, it was so weird. Yeah. Are there any plans to address some of these bot killers or friendly killers that don't play the game? They just want to farm blood points because it can be frustrating for survivors to wait 10 to 15 minutes for a game and then the killer just wants to farm points. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Um, I mean, this, uh, I don't know exactly about this specific problem. I mean, I've heard about it during the years, but this is definitely something that uh, is reportable and that we can, um, you know, that you can send through the report system. So any player that this happens and they uh, face a, a boring match, you know, that against a killer that has no sportmanship and just want to farm, um, they can report that individual and explain the situation. And this helps us on the design side to see what type of solution we can put in the game for the future. So the skill-based matchmaking system, I think, is a good step to fairer matchmaking. Doesn't use ranks, which is just based on play time. What are the challenges in de developing this new system? Because I know you've done a lot of testing, testing it on the live servers, taking it off and making adjustments. And will players have any indication on where they are in the skill-based matchmaking system? All right, great question. So yeah, the most challenging part of, well, first of all, building an, an MMR system is always a huge endeavor. It's, it's very complex and unique to the game you're building, right? Since Dead by Daylight is asymmetrical, it adds a lot of complexity on understanding what is exactly the goal of each individual uh, because it's so free form and you can do multiple things. And you know, that's, that's a thing that we're rating and you can see that in the emblem system. Like it's, it, all the aspects of the game are rated. And so if you are more of an altruistic survivor, for example, but you sacrifice yourself to save the others, is that considered a win? or you know, uh, other, other types of events. You know, how many hooks exactly is considered a win? You know, how many sacrifice for the killer? What's, what's the actions that are considered a win? And how can we um, find the right recipe to understand what skill means for the killer and the survivor and one against the, you know, each other? So there was a lot of effort put, put into analyzing get the game, our data, and understanding how can we rate players. And that's what you see today, you know, uh, well, you don't see it, it's, it's under the hood, but that's what it is used. And of course, it's something that as we're using it more and more, we get uh, new data and we can understand more what we can tweak so that it's even more realistic. So I can't go into details on you know, exactly how it works, but that's, that's the work and the challenge that we have. Now, will the player see um, how they're rated in the matchmaking system so for now, that's not part of the plan. It's something that we, we want to keep uh, it in. Uh, it's not necessarily information that we want to give away. It might change in the future though. We might have some sort of, of clue or int to your, um, to your rating. Um, I don't know. Something else that was mentioned in the anniversary live stream was boon totems. Can we expect to see those soon? Absolutely. Uh, that's something that uh, we're quite excited about, just like the Scourge hook. Uh, the boon is a, a new type of way to play with totems for, uh, for the survivor and a new type of perk. So uh, yes, you can expect that soon. Yeah, that was definitely something unexpected because hex perks have always been for the killer only. So now people are wondering how that will interact with hex perks and can killers interact with boon totems or is it for survivors only? A absolutely. That's, uh, that's our goal is to take the you know, existing elements in the match and make them even more rich so that there's more gameplay possibilities around them. Yeah, more unique builds and yeah. all of that. With the mores being changed as well, did you just want to change these, like you said, so it's not a surprise? Or were mores not performing as well as they were before? Or are they overperforming and need a change? Um, actually, the, the, latest, um, the latest tweak to the Mori system um, don't make them, you know, that powerful or that annoying, in our opinion. I mean, we've seen also through surveys that players seems to think so as well. Uh, they're, le they're less, um, they're not considered as toxic as they were 
um, you know, a year ago or two years ago. But uh, it's not our only goals with this system uh, refactor anyways. We, we want to make sure that Mori's are, yes, part of a normal uh, gameplay match that you can expect them. And when they happen, they're really fun. But also that we uh, potentially see them more often in even cooler ways. You know, Mori's are really fun when they happen. Uh, you know, just the animation and, you know, the, uh, yeah. So, so we want to make sure that they are uh, highlighted um, not only through the use of an offering and that when they happen, everybody expect it and are, right. you know, not necessarily happy, but it. yeah, exactly. <laughs> like survivors will tend to play not as brave if they know a Mori is in play because they don't want to get Moried. Yeah. And the, the important point is that we're also going to add gameplay to the survivor um, you know, they will be able to do something so that the Mori doesn't happen. So if it happens, you know, it's a bit like feeding Myers. If you know he's right. stalking, well, you know, you know what's coming. Yeah, it's definitely interesting to see all these big new changes that are going to come to the game over the next year. Absolutely. Now, I know a lot of survivors or killers complain about generators being done too fast. Um, according to what you guys see, are generators in a good place? It really depends. Uh, so the way we analyze uh, these issues is um, it can't be perceived as a generality. Like it's, it really depends on the, the ranks, on specific builds. So, well, I say ranks, now I have to say MMR, right? right. Uh, so, you know, it, it's sometimes very specified to a, a group. Um, so we need to dig into that specific data and see if some tweaks um, would make this uh, fairer at, for this particular group. So that's what the team is looking into right now. As you've added more perks for the killers to kind of control generators, have you seen any change in how fast generators are done or how many survivors escape? Yeah, th those perks are, uh, of course, useful. Um, uh, the only thing is that we need to make sure that it's not something that you absolutely need to equip. You know, uh, uh, again, especially on for these specific groups, if they feel that they're rushed and they really need that specific perk always, it's not something that we want. We want it to be a choice. If you want to, you know, uh, if you want this, you can, but you don't necessarily need it. Right, you don't want players forced into thinking they need yeah. something to... For sure. be able to play the game for sure what is a successful killer game for dead by daylight a lot of people compare two kills or four kills and getting like seven hooks but you only kill one person this is my personal answer personally i feel that a good killer game game is when you're having fun <laughs> that's kind of a yeah. kind of a generic answer but it's you know anybody well, everybody has its own definition of a, of a victory. Um, for me, when I play killer, I like to spook the survivor if they're freaking out a little bit once in a while. If I could see their reaction and see that they're freaking yeah. out, I uh, would be having fun. And it doesn't really matter if they all escape or not. Data-wise or balance-wise, we often go with a 60% uh, efficiency or power on the killer, uh, which means that they should get two sacrifice or a little bit more in hook value uh, during the match. Um, so this is kind of the general rule we're using. We also saw through survey that uh, our players are also thinking um, likewise. You know, you can have just one sacrifice and it could be considered a win as long as the experience was fun. Yeah, and that's one of the great things about Dead by Daylight is there's nothing clear to set a win from a loss. Like survivors, you can feel like you won even though you got sacrificed because you helped your entire team escape. And as killer, you can feel like you did a good job because you hooked everybody and got a few kills, even if one or two get away. Yeah. So I'd say to the players, you know, push yourself as much as you want. Um, you know, don't be toxic with yourself uh, and, and have a good time. Um, so, you know, myself, I like to at least have one sacrifice. I think that I need to give at least one sacrifice to the entity in order to win. 
So that for me is a victory. And then, you know, the rest is, uh, is all fun and games. Yeah, until the next trial. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How has it been? I know Dead by Daylight is known for having a lot of toxicity. How has that been dealing with player toxicity and like changing the game or trying to make it so players aren't so toxic to each other? Within the game, there's uh, different efforts, uh, you know, that that are going in and that uh, are already in. You know, things like uh, making sure that the chat is safer, making sure that you can report players that are being very toxic, uh, things like that. So, of course, we want to make sure that our community is safe. Um, within the game, though, there are some things that are considered toxic that are more challenging to um, to have rules on. You know. Uh, teabagging uh, you know st stuff like that which is like kind of in a in a gray zone uh, where i'm very proud of the effort we've made though through the years is um in the community outside of the game and i think that's where you know people need to feel safe and have fun within our community and we have an, an amazing team that is focused on that um you know to to moderate and make sure that the community is, is thriving having fun with you know, doing fan content with uh, having fun together uh, and memeing the game yeah. rather than, you know, uh, fighting uh, each other uh, based on the roles they're playing. That's probably another thing that led to Dead by Daylight success is you focus so much on your community and you made the Dead by Daylight forums, players doing all the art contests and cosplay contests has made people feel like they're more a part of this game. Oh, absolutely. I mean, community is the, is the lifeblood of, of the project. I mean, uh, I consider them, well, let's say the, the entity of the community as, you know, a colleague. Uh, it's, it's as much their game, uh, you know, every single player than it is ours to create. So uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a teamwork between the community and the dev team. So when you started on the Dead by Daylight project, did you ever think it would be this big? Well, um, I like to think positive. Of course, I, I did believe in the project. Uh, we come from a very indie, uh, you know, idea, uh, meaning very small. You know, we were very small, uh, about 30 individuals back in the days. We really believed in that idea. Uh, so, yes, we were positive, but of course, we couldn't expect it to be such a, a, a big success and so fast and to last so long in the first years. Um, yeah. So happily surprised, yes. Yeah, it was really amazing seeing how you guys got all those licensed killers into the game over the years and see all the players react positively and then start speculating about who's next. And Absolutely. And there's this snowball effect, right? That uh, the, the more of these characters come in and the more, you know, great chapters we, we release and the more fantasy we add to the game. Yeah, there's this snowball effect where, you know, uh, even other characters kind of want to be part of the family now. They want to be part of that, that group of, the, uh, you know, of Dead by Daylight. I know we all have an exciting announcement for everybody watching. When can we all expect the Hellraiser chapter to reach live servers in Dead by Daylight. Yes, so it's official. It will release next Tuesday. And we'll finally have Pinhead in the game. Looking out for those chains. Look behind your back when you're on a generator. Look out for the lament configuration because he'll be hunting you down. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He does look like a really interesting killer, I think. Able to play at loops and mind game. He has a lot of potential. But I think definitely high skill cap, like you need some practice getting those oh, chains yeah. around the corner. Absolutely. You, you, need, you need some knowledge about the map and that control of the, the chain is, uh, is skill based. So it's really fun. Yeah, the chains kind of reminded me of the chainsaw where the sensitivity is very high mm -hmm. on the start. So you can do some epic curves around corners. Absolutely. Did you get to play test Pinhead at all? Yeah, of course. Of course I did. Uh, I haven't in the PTB though. I haven't uh, played him, uh, played uh, with him against uh, the community yet. Uh, probably gonna get my ass kicked. But uh, yeah, I, I played <laughs> internally with the team. Everybody, thank you very much for watching. This was Dave Richard from Dead by Daylight, and as always, good luck out there in the fog, and see you next time.